the Evercade, the brand new cartridge-based handheld retro system. It keeps getting a little more interesting as time goes on. These guys definitely know how to trickle out information and tease a product, right? So we've previously talked about this in a couple videos. When it was first announced, we didn't really know what it was. And then when they announced it, showed it off and whatnot. And when I got some information concerning who was involved, I shared that with you guys. That was what was shared with me. It looks like Funstock Retro are the ones who are making this device. But today they just announced a couple new publishers that are going to be putting games on their system. So a couple new cartridges, bunch of new games. Some things may be a little surprising, but I want to comment on this today because I'm seeing a trend with these retro gaming products, with companies that I really like, with companies I don't care about. I'm seeing this trend with these specific games. So let's go ahead and take a look at Evercade's official website here. So you can put in your email, get notified. They will be opening up pre-orders pretty soon. We've already taken a look at all these images, but just a little refresher. Doesn't look too bad, looks kind of neat, but fairly similar to a lot of other devices out there. These are just renders, they're not actual product photos. So for me, renders don't mean jack. We have to see an actual product, but if this is the direction it's going, it might not look too bad, right? I mean, that's where it's at right now. You have display options, all that good stuff. We've already went over all that. We'll be releasing quarter four, 2019. So that could be the end of the year dipping into early next year, but I would assume holiday time. They have these uh, different pricings here. US with one cartridge, 80 bucks, three cartridges, $100. That's the way to go, I would imagine, paying that extra 20 bucks. That's the way I would go if I do pre-order this. I'm still on the fence on this thing. Don't know. Where to buy, they will open that up pretty soon. Sign up to be notified. I would imagine Amazon, Funstock Retro, so on and so forth. Through the UK and the US, everywhere it will be available. I'm sure those are the places they're going to go. Expanding library, connect to the HDMI. We'll have to see how that works. 8-bit and 16-bit games, this is the big thing celebrate them their classics. So let's look at what they just announced. Interplay. So I've been trying to read up on Interplay all day long today, all day long today, trying to figure out what really happened with Interplay because they sold off these franchises that they own a couple years ago. And I can't really find too much information on what happened with that. Like who owns these franchises? Who's really Interplay nowadays? Information is kind of slim out there. If you guys have any more information concerning Interplay, let me know because I've been Googling Interplay all day long and I can't find much of any information out there that's of interest and of concern to me. Just a lot of mumbo jumbo stuff, but I'm not 100% who owns these franchises. I don't know who owns the Interplay name, but this is intriguing in a sense because the next set of games, the next publisher to me is just like, they're cool games, but it's been done. And I see a trend with this Interplay stuff being started as well. So on this collection, on this cartridge, we're going to be getting Clay Fighter, Earthworm Jim, Battle Chess, Boogeyman, um, Incantation, and Titan. I'm familiar with Clay Fighter, Earthworm Jim, Battle Chess, and Boogerman. A lot of people want to see a new Boogerman. I don't know. A pick and flick adventure. That might be kind of interesting. I was not a big Boogerman person. I mean, the gross-out humor type stuff's kind of funny at, at times, but uh, stuff like that just never really intrigued me. I guess if you're a little kid, I wasn't a little kid when that game came out, so maybe that was part of it. If I was little, I'd probably been like, hee, boogers, yay, let's play this. But I know a lot of people do love the game. I just don't remember ever getting into it. I'm sure it's a good one, but a lot of people do want to see a sequel to that. We do have a sequel of Earthworm Jim, being worked on by Doug Tanapple and a lot of people from the original crew uh, with Tommy Tallarico as well. I mean, he was part of the original crew as well for the Amico coming out in 2020. So that's pretty cool to see that. And that's going to be exclusive on the Amico. But now we are seeing Earthworm Jim popping up quite a bit more lately. Now, some people are wondering what versions of these game are these games. If the box art is any indication at least to me for Earthworm Jim, because that's the one everybody's wondering, like, which version is it? We want the Genesis version. We don't want the Super Nintendo version, that kind of thing. 
And, you know, that's up for debate however you guys want to me. I, I don't care. But, I mean, a lot of people do say the Genesis version is better. I'll have to play it. I've only ever played the uh, Super Nintendo version. But I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those people that are like, no, this is the best. If it's damn better on the Genesis, I'm going to play it and, and agree with you. You know what I'm saying? So I'll have to test that out, report back. You know what I'm saying? But this box art right here is uh, the cropped box art from the Sega Genesis box. Not the same as the uh, Mega Drive box exactly. Um, it's it's the same art and whatnot. I'm just I'm looking at the logos and everything that are on there. This is from the Genesis, the Sega Genesis. It's cropped from that box art. That would lead me to believe that they're going to use the Genesis version of this. So for those who really love the Genesis version, it seems like a good thing. Hopefully, anyway. Not 100% with these other games. I'm not familiar with everything here. Clay Fighter. Eh, it was an okay game. Earthworm Jim's pretty cool. Boogerman for a lot of people is pretty cool. These the Battle Chess is a fun game if you're into that kind of stuff. Titan and Incantation I'm not really familiar with. I need to jump into those and check them out. Not 100% with those guys. But I'm seeing that trend. Like Earthworm Jim, is, he's having that resurgence. And it seems like what I'm about to talk about with the next company is Earthworm Jim's going to be making an appearance in a lot of places licensing these old franchises that aren't making any money anymore they're old school versions of the games that nobody's putting them up to download on the switch or on the ps4 the xbox steam and stuff like that they're going to be licensed to all these different companies earthworm jim boom you know one and two is going to be released by i am 8-bit for 135 flipping dollars Holy crap, pre-orders are going live pretty dang soon, so keep an eye for that if you want to spend an, an enormous amount of money for an Infinite NES Lives cartridge that the board only costs like $20 to the public, and the games, the original cartridges aren't very expensive. It is what it is. I don't... I. I I, my feelings on I am 8-bit are kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. With this licensing and, and just trying to really make that money is, is crazy, man, 135 bucks. But I, what I'm getting at is I'm thinking we're going to be seeing stuff like Earthworm Jim and these other Interplay franchises, whoever's licensing this crap out, they want to make that money. These things are laying dormant. The retro gaming market is crazy right now. Everybody wants to play these retro games. So I'm sure we'll see a, 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 a My Arcade version of this. Uh, you know, maybe other people put out cartridges. You'll have little handhelds that have collections of games on it that are similar to, to this thing, but not with cartridges, just has games preloaded. We're going to see a lot of different things with games like this being released you'll see other companies coming out with plug and plays and i'm sure these games will be on there because going to the next company data east some awesome games now i'm not knocking any of this stuff i love bad dudes i love burger time side pockets a fun game not sure which version it is but maybe the nes i don't know karate champ joe and max a good game fighters history uh, i'm not really too into it Two crude dudes, not really my style. Magical Drop 2 is a good game. Uh, Burning Rubber or Buggy Popper, Bump and Jump, various names for it. It's a pretty fun game. These are these are solid games, but they're games we've seen all over the place already. We've seen those My Arcades of most of these games. We've seen these games on the uh, Retro Bit Super Retrocade. We've seen cartridges released of these. Data East is a company that is just licensing out their games all over the place. And I'm sure there's tons of uh, uh, other companies that I'm missing here that have used these franchises and these games, you know, and licensed them and put them on products. But I really, what my point is, is with this stuff and the, the trend that I see, and I see Interplay's kind of jumping into that. So this stuff doesn't surprise me, doesn't shock me. I'm not like, Oh my God, Clay Fighter and Earthworm Jim are on this thing because I know we're going to see it on other devices as well. And just like Data East stuff, these are awesome games, but we've seen them over and over and over again. So for me, for this, this uh, Evercade, this handheld, which is just going to be emulation, by the way, 
still an interesting idea, but I mean, we need to see how the emulation works. If you got screen tearing like a mofo on this thing, like this, and there's nothing, I mean, this device is not for tinkerers. Don't release a product that we have to, this is the thing. You release a product that we have to figure out how to hack to make it right, your product was shit to begin with. So don't release a shit product. Make sure the emulation is on point. Make sure if you're not making your own emulation that you're licensing things properly. Because I don't want to hear about how they released this and they stole emulators and shit like that. And that's a big thing in the, the retro community as well is stealing, you know, other people's work and selling it. You know what I mean? People use emulators. People do stuff with it as they please. ROMs, all that good stuff. But when people get into selling emulators on commercial products, that's where people start getting a little crazy. So hopefully these guys aren't going to be doing that. I hope they don't, but we'll have to wait and see. But where I'm at with this thing is surprise us because right now with this Atari stuff, I don't give a crap about the Atari stuff. The Interplay stuff, I am i don't care. The Data East stuff, I have a lot of nostalgia for a good handful of these games, but I don't care. I have to see something surprising. I have to see something amazing to really sell me on this. Would I want these three cartridges? Sure. But hopefully any other publishers that are coming out that are, you know, they're licensing their games for this device, hopefully there's going to be some sweet ball amazing stuff. I mean, Capcom's big on licensing stuff. But if you go through Capcom, try to get some unique stuff that we haven't seen before. That kind of thing, right? Try, try to do something. Uh, you know, there's tons of companies out there they could be going to to get some interesting stuff. Hit up Pico. See if Pico will... Pico has a ton of awesome games that they own the rights to. Pico, get some Pico stuff on here because that would be kind of unique. Seeing some games that people aren't familiar with, but, you know, maybe word of mouth with the games that Pico owns. Like, people would be like, whoa, I've never heard of that. That looks neat, you know. Get people pumped up, you know, not just Pico, but other companies as well. Uh, you know, get that stuff on there, man, because right now I'm not I'm not necessarily pumped up for this thing. Got to see some surprises. So that's where we're at. These guys say they may have another announcement. We'll have to wait and see. But right now, this is where it's at. Let me know what you think. Is Are you down in it? Or are you just going to be, hey, I'm playing on my BitBoy these games, which we've already reviewed this. Um, this thing, I, I don't care for it. We're going to be taking a look at this actually next, the LDK game. As you can see, I have a, a glass screen protector kind of on there. It's not fit, but it covers the, the actual gameplay area. If I put a screen protector on a device, that means I like the device. So spoiler, right? <laughs> but we'll be taking a look at this in another video. Um, but there you are. Let me know what you guys think. With that said, I will catch y'all next time. Thanks for spending the time with me. Really do appreciate it. Peace out, bye-byes, and boom. Bye. Bye.